<laughs> What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of A and B Conversations. I am Coach Brian. Get your fine holistic trainer and wellness guide. You find me all over Instagram, TikTok, all that type of stuff. And on the side of me, I have the beautiful Amber. Why is your mic like that? Like what? I just realized your mic is way down over there. Is that not right? Can they not? That's, they it, can't hear it me. Gotta it gotta be. Welcome back to another episode. And uh, yeah, we going I'm not like I said. I'm not really leading the questions today. She came up to me. She was like, I got the questions for you. I was like, all right, let's do it. So we got 25 people up in here. Okay. Normally, we wait till like 100 and something, but let's just get this. If they miss it, they miss it. Y'all the ones that tuned in. Okay, we're going to start off with some easy questions. Okay. How was it adjusting to a partner that insisted on having design control in the house? I feel like most dudes ain't even really going to see that as a problem. Mm. Because like, but you did at first. I I did I did. But but that, but that was actually before we moved in. You talk okay. So you talking about like when we was in the apartment, or when we when, got to the house. When we was in the apartment, and we were first just talking about it and kind of seeing how each other feel about just towards the aspect of moving in mm-hmm. and who would have like design control. I I feel like. I kind of did have a problem with it, but that's because I didn't know how good of a designer you was. Because mm. when you first came to me with that, I was like, I mean, I assume that most women know how to just design, but, no, I, but, not, I, didn't, but I didn't know if like you was going to be like, girly, or like, she wanted her with, like, I didn't know, because I could be controlling. So it's like, yes. I, I had mm-hmm. to learn to give it a try after I saw what you could do, but I was apprehensive at first, but I feel like the way you would talk about stuff, I kind of knew you already had a certain mindset about certain things, so... I trusted you. I felt like it w- it wasn't the easiest transition, but I trusted you, especially when we got here. Cause like by the time we got here, I had already saw what you was doing with the apartment and then like your ideas and stuff you would show me. So whenever we got here, I was like, all right, cool, whatever you want to do. Okay, okay. So what's your favorite place that I have done in the house? This house. This house. This house. Well, you. Well, we could go in general. I mean, I know you like when I do closets. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna stick to. I'm gonna stick to the house. I'm gonna stick over here. Uh. I ain't gonna lie. So far, the kitchen is probably number one. The kitchen has because it's had a full but it's it's tied though because I did love whenever you had the bedroom as the studio too. Mm-hmm. That was so because it was the it was the way you was the, like I like the world you created. So it was either your studio or the kitchen. I probably said that they tied right now because the studio had like this fluffy artistic open space to it, but the kitchen has functionality and it looks different. It doesn't, I ain't gonna say it doesn't look like the rest of the house because it fits with the rest of the house, mm-hmm. but like it has like a, like a sleek, like look kind of slick, luxurious type look to it, but it's not like, it's not overdone. It's a kitchen, but it looks yes. good. It looks like really good for a kitchen. It is a lot better than what it used to be. That video will be up mm-hmm. soon. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, I, I hope I'm saying this right. Simon's 159. She said beautiful dress. Oh, so, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to... It was my grandmother's. Shout out to everybody that's in here. Uh, and also, Josh ASMR. Thank you so much, my dude. Thank y'all for being up in here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, so this is like... I think it's something that's really hyped up in social media right now. It is high-maintenance friend or low-maintenance friend. So, w- would you... You might not like my ass. <laughs> I'm like, you might not like my ass. Would you say that you are a high-maintenance oh, friend? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that you are a high-maintenance friend or a low-maintenance friend? Uh, I feel like I'm a low-maintenance friend, but I'm a lot to deal with. So, are you high-maintenance? I don't know. Because <laughs> it's like, I I can go days for not talking with people and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I feel like I'm high-maintenance because... Like, prime example with Kenny. I push Kenny. Like, I, well, all my friends, my close mm-hmm. friends, I'm going to push you. I'm going to be in your face. It's like when we joking, I'm going to be all over the place. And I'm working on it, well, but I have no filters. Well, so. let's define the high and low maintenance because I think I think technically you are low maintenance. Low maintenance, as I am thinking, is when you can go months without talking to your friends. But when y'all do talk, y'all still good. Yeah, I'm not low maintenance. It's like, I, I I must be high maintenance then. Well, you can go a week, a month, or even months. You can go a really long time period without talking to your friends and still be like, just on the same page. Oh, then yeah. Ready to talk whenever y'all do talk. Yeah. 
and high maintenance friends is more like, no, I got to talk to you every day to know no, that oh like no, no. you okay and <laughs> that's like high maintenance. Mm-mm, I'm not high maintenance. It's like I would, I like that. Don't get me wrong. I like mm-hmm. whenever people check. I like the little things like checking up on me and like well us checking up on each other. We mm-hmm. keeping in con- even if it's not a long conversation, we keeping in contact with each other. But to have to do it every day, all of that is like I like the fact that okay, if we don't. If time goes by, no hard feelings. It's like we all mm-hmm. just because we're all adults. Yes. Like we we twenty. Like I'm the, I feel like I'm like in the middle of the friend group because. But we I got still friend. feel as though there are some adults that are high maintenance friends. I, mm. I, I don't think the group people that we hang around are like that, but I feel like there is high maintenance mm-hmm. older people. Which which <laughs> does but doesn't make sense to me because it's like you got people like Kenny and them and calling them that's like mm-hmm. younger, not that much younger, but they're younger than us. Then you have us. That's like in the 27, 28, like us and Kai. We're, we're around the same age. Mm-hmm. But then you have Andre and them who's in their 30s. Right. So it's like, we all, prime example, Kai is the ultimate example of like a low maintenance friend. Very. Like, mm-hmm. we'll be there when you call. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she's, we, we, every time we get together, it's a good time. But she but goes, goes. I'm about to say, you're not going to hear from Kai for about like a month. <laughs> But she's, but we, but, but I she, have, but we know that she's working on stuff. Exa- and, and she's not right. just, I feel as though it's a difference when, if you're ignoring, I guess. Yeah, rather than just living a life. Yeah, because like, if you got something to actually talk about, and it's serious, and like, say you call one week, you call the next week, and mm-hmm. it's something like you seriously need to talk about, right. I think that is like, I'm, I'm cool with that, like. Well, that's friendship. Yeah. You know, that's, like, real... Because, like, my thing is, like, a friend... Because it gets to the point to where we we talking about low and high maintenance, but is it really friendship or association? Because, you, well, friend, friends are associates is what I should say. Because you got friends that, like, you actually deal with on that level, and then mm-hmm. you have associates to where it's, like, we kind of kick it from time to time, but you ain't... Even if we go months without each other, you're still not a low maintenance friend. You're just an associate. I don't have the same stipulations or, like, actions are whatever boundaries I would have with a friend as I would with an associate. You see, I think I'm low-maintenance in general, though, because... You're a low-maintenance friend, friend but a high-maintenance girlfriend. Oh, oh, mm. that's oh, that's what you wanted to say? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, not, and not meaning, like, because you, you are right, like, I had to adjust that because you don't have to be in my face all day, every day. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm more physical touch. So what, what makes me high-maintenance? Because you're picky. Like, you're real, you're real picky and you're specific about stuff. You know, so it's like... It's like... As easy as you are to get with, it's like I gotta make sure that how can I put? It? I gotta because I don't want to. I don't make it sound bad. Go it's not. It's not a. It. Well, no, like it's not a bad thing, but it's just like if you like, it's like having a, a, a like a duck egg or like a like a poach, like whatever them little expensive emerald egg stuff is. Like you okay. can't just handle it any a type of way. Egg. Those you can't just handle it any type of way. It's not that it's a bad thing that you have to handle it certain type of way, but it's like. You have you just have to handle a certain type because it's valuable, mm. you know. So like the high maintenance is like yes and no. It's more so I I think just because it's like it's just girlfriend stuff. You heard it here first. I'm a Fabergé egg. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and before we move on to next thing, shout out to Shar. I see Shar in the building. Shar say my maintenance depends on the kind of friendship I have with you, and that and that's essentially what I was trying to say too. Is like we is like if I have a close like prime example, Chris and him mm-hmm. is like. I don't feel as though it's a high maintenance relationship, but it's like we do treat treat each other accordingly. Mm-hmm. Who's going? He's going to be on the show t- soon uh, too, by the way. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we treat each other accordingly. It's like we may not have to meet all the time, but it's like when we do link up, like when we went to Tula's, it was Sunday. Yeah. And and prime example, him and Ryan. Like Ryan to me is a real low maintenance friend because I only see Ryan if two times out of the week for rehearsal because yeah. it's work for rehearsal and, and he stays in Lake Charles. Yeah. But Chris is somebody I see more regularly, I talk mm-hmm. to more regularly, but that doesn't make him a high maintenance friend. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like that. That's how that's how I'm viewing it as far as like I, I move because I never really thought about it as low and high maintenance friends. It was more so I just move accordingly to what the situation yields for that friendship. I think I'm low in general. Like it is it's just something I know about me. If you are high maintenance, I probably I probably would be considered a bad friend, honestly, Thanks. because I don't want to talk every day. I don't. I, really don't. I mean, but what, like you said, what is there to talk about every day like that? I don't think there's honest. that much to talk about every day, in my personal opinion. But um, yeah, I'm I'm low maintenance all the way around. All the way around. When I it like comes it. to my friends, apparently I'm a high maintenance girlfriend. <laughs> 
Oh my <laughs> God. You better not take that the wrong way. I'm not What's going on, Divine? She said, uh, hello, my favorite couple. <laughs> hey. How does the audio sound to y'all too? We had to unplug the little um the little eye rig thing. So let us know if like the audio is too low or too loud, because we'll adjust or whatever for y'all. Cause I know the people that's gonna hear this on YouTube with the mics, that's gonna be a whole different audio experience than y'all. Young DJ. Oh, that's DJ. What's up, DJ? What? Young D DJ. Hey. DJ 21? He is 21. He just turned now. 21. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Happy happy well, not belated. I already told you happy it's birthday, but happy birthday again, DJ. And Shara said, uh, okay, they said they can hear it's cool. Shara said, I do have one friend I talk to every day. We watch shows together on FaceTime. The sound is good. Okay. Aww, but that's sweet. like, see, but I it's like. But it's the thing that they come together for. It's not mm -hmm. like they probably in each other like, oh, I have to like send you paragraphs all day. Uh, and, it, and it may there, be. No, there is some friendships like that. I feel as though I had maybe a friendship like that before. Who, if you could say their name on the, on the line, on the air? It was, it was Chanel. Okay. But, you know, we grew apart. Like, we're still friends, but, you know, people do grow in different directions sometimes which is okay and like i said we're still friends we're just different types of friends now mm -hmm. so. that's just a pillow i ain't got i ain't got no cushion back there i ain't got no booty like that it's full time <laughs> still <laughs> okay <laughs> was there ever a point in time when you wish you were single while in a relationship well you are in general it could be me or in general in most of my relationships oh. because i would get to that point to where it's like what am I doing here? You know, it's like, why am I putting up with this blank? You know, because it's like, no, like for real, because it's like, it's like you get to, I'm pretty sure everybody goes through that mm -hmm. because it's like you go, you hit to certain, you hit certain walls in relationships to where it's like, and whether it's like a, you really sitting down and being serious with yourself or even mm -hmm. if you're just in the moment, because we already know that's two different types of thought patterns. But it's like, there has been plenty of moments to where it's like, I'd rather just be single. And then you think about, like, I might have had that thought maybe one time in this relationship, but mm -hmm. then I thought about, for the first time, I actually had this experience of, like, somewhat thinking about a life without you, and I was like, yeah, I'd rather not be single. And not even for the sake of, oh, to have or to keep a girlfriend, but it's for the sake of what we've been through, what we've learned together, the life we're building together, and, like, the love I have for you. So it's, like, the thought of, like, I hate to sound dramatic, but, like, mm -hmm. the, the thought of, like, not having you is, like, I'd rather... I would rather just have you at the worst than to be single and pursue my best, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> It's the truth. <laughs> okay. If there is something you would change about yourself, what would it be? Mm. Oh, child. You got me thinking now. If there was something... About myself, I could change. What would it be? Mm -hmm. It's more so past things, honestly. Nope, we can't talk about the past. <laughs> um, well, if you want to bring up the well, past. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just thinking about like my past habits. It's like, I don't even know what to pick because it's like, it's not a lot that I would like to change about myself, but it's like, I wish that I had a bigger, a bigger capacity to change faster because I'm a habitual creature. So it's like, prime example... We sat down and talked about how I was going to start working out at 5 a.m. instead of 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, this, that, and the third. But I know what that takes for me to get into that routine. So what I started doing instead, I started to wake up earlier. I started to do things early. And, and I've been gradually waking up before, like earlier and earlier. But me just switching from like 7 to 5, I can't function properly like that. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had the capacity to be like, oh, I'm changing this. Boom, like that. Now, my mental state, I could like adapt ideologies that fast but to but to move and stuff like that that fast it, it messes with me a lot so i would say my capacity one was i'm gonna say two things one my capacity to change and two my leniency because like i work so hard to to be a certain type of way so i don't come off a certain type of way but it's like I have a I have a, a meter or a set amount of leniency with each person, and I feel like it all should be well. Most of it should be X across the board, if that makes sense. Like that's one thing I admire about you. It don't matter who, and I had to learn that from you, like vicariously through you. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't care if that show family member did that in the third. It's like if a boundary is a boundary, and that's yes. what I'm getting at. Like a boundary is a boundary, and I'm just getting to that point to where it's like I can say no. I cannot pick up the phone. I'm I don't feel obligated. You know what I'm saying? And I say that that I'm. 
that it makes me a bad person. It doesn't. But it's like there's days where really well, it's well, just being realistic. Like I'm human, so it's like I shouldn't be stressing myself with the non leniency of like my boundaries or my space. Mm-hmm. You know, even in our relationship, not to say that like does we have anything like that, but mm-hmm. it's like having to check myself is like. Am I doing too much? Am I letting too much slide? You know, like, am I am I masking myself for the sake of something? You know? So okay. that would be the two things I would change. Okay. I should have moisturized my beard before this. <laughs> I am itchy, boy. <laughs> that beard is growing back. If I can change one thing about me... Oh, now you want to answer questions. What? I, I was... I think... You can now keep going. <laughs> <laughs> if I could change one thing about me, it would probably be... Just being more consistent and not being... I don't know if I'm easily overwhelmed, but I do get overwhelmed. I wouldn't say easily, because to say easily overwhelmed would mean with everything. I feel as though it's with the monumental... It's like with the things that require drastic change or a drastic impact in your life, you can get overwhelmed like that. Yeah, like I take a lot of energy to like just do projects and then on top of that, to film it and make sure that I'm getting all of the details that it takes to film the process. And, yeah, it's like, I have a, like, and that's the, I have a lot of videos. <laughs> just save them a hard drive that I just have to, but mm-hmm. I can, but it's a process because as I'm getting in the mindset of editing, I'm also still creating. So it's, mm-hmm. it, it's a process. I can't wait for y'all. When she start dropping that stuff, I can't wait. I can't wait. M. Devine says, uh, now it's, in the past, I wish I left relationships sooner. Now it's hard to let anyone around me. That's, I feel like that's a good problem. Because it's like, I would rather be mindful of who's around me than just letting everybody in and wreaking havoc in my life. Because you're going to soak up or be a product of some form of that environment if you have a bunch of just bad, random people around you, as opposed to a minute amount of people around you. Yeah, I I would say it's not a bad thing to be wary of who you have around you, but I will say that you do have to be still a little open in order to let the good people in. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah, I would not let everyone around. Be around, me. Yeah. yeah. This it's a privilege to be in somebody's presence. Definitely. It's Shout out to Moonbeam. I see Moonbeam in the building. She said the best couple is live. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for Moonbeam. tuning into another episode of A and B Conversations. <laughs> what is something you would change about your partner? Me. Mm, I, <laughs> well, I wonder who you could be talking about. Um, oh, that's this is a hard question. I don't... I don't know. I, I never thought about that. Uh... This this how you felt whenever I was asking, I was asking you them questions on the spot the last time, huh? Mm-hmm. Not even I got to dig for an answer. I mean, I I probably would agree with the consistency thing. That's about it. I can't think of nothing else because I wouldn't want to change. I like exactly what I have. You know, it's like and what's becoming of you. So I don't really have an answer for that. <laughs> it's like because we I feel like we both lack quote unquote in certain areas the same. It's like. Where you're wishing to be more consistent and fight against being overwhelmed, I I pretty much like what I'm doing right now as far as like with the investments and like mm-hmm. trying to forward the business and stuff like that. I'm in the same thing. Is don't I feel like the only difference we have is like I just I'm more submersive than you are when it comes. I'm I'm a workhorse in a sense, and you are the same too. But it's just like insert like I just I don't know how to not work, mm-hmm. and you know how to work. You know how to do the same thing, but it's like. It's just something about that overwhelming switch. It cuts off for you, but I could be having a breakdown and I still have to work. But I don't know. It's just it's weird. I just can't cut it off. Yes, you don't know how to cut it off. Yeah, it's proven to be very bad, like a very <laughs> bad thing in times past. But you know, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's to call it a bad thing. I think it's just like because I know what all is having to be done. I just wish. He did know when to cut it off sometimes. Yeah. So. Working on it. I'm getting better at it for sure. But before, no, it, it's, I'm still figuring that out. I'm not even going to lie. I'm still figuring that out. I'll just go straight into the next question. <laughs> Is being a provider all this cracked up to be? No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, it's not. Like, I love the accolades. I love the fact that I can. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that... Because you know what? I, it's twofold. It's crazy that you... I was thinking about this the other day. That's mm. crazy. We so we be so in sync. But it's like, I genuinely do love it. I wouldn't, like, honestly, I wouldn't... It would. I wouldn't even know what it would take for me to stop doing it. Because I genuinely love to do it. But the human in me is like... Because I'm knowing this answer is going to be different by January. Because by January, we set. But this Honestly, the next month, the, like what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make sure we set. So providing looks different when you have X amount of dollars per... You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like but for the average person, because we're still... I'm still... I still consider myself a, economically an average person. I don't... I don't... You know, I'm not making as much money as people probably think I'm making. But like, I make enough. Mm-hmm. And it's like, for right now, no, it's not what it's tracked up to be. Because it feels great to have sustainability and comfort and being solid and like you can count on me and stuff like that but until we get to the point to where i'm averaging like what five five figures plus a month is like who's really who's really comfortable saying that they're you know what i'm saying i'm I'm just thinking about like the scale of life yeah not even i'm not it's not even in regards to you at all i'm just thinking about like the scale of life yes because once you start providing it's like when you stop, you kind of, you don't. No, like for real, because the mindset of of like the value of money has completely changed to me. It's like mm-hmm. I don't think it's like I forgot what conversation we was having, but I was thinking about like gas and stuff like that, and I was thinking about like food. I don't even like I. It's been so long since I could recall like what food for one person is like, mm-hmm. because I've been even when, even before I started providing, like when we started dating, I automatically went into like. Okay, I gotta make sure I have X amount on me whenever I go to here because we're both eating. Whenever we go, like, prom- like what? I can't recall the last time, like, where you actually really had to pay for anything food, right? You know what I'm saying? Because like that's just as a. <laughs> I think the last time I paid was maybe for your birthday. And that's because you wanted to. Yeah. I even I was trying to pay then, you know. So it's like I, it's not what it's cracked up to be, but I feel like it gets to that point once you achieve said goals, because as a provider that's trying to figure it out. All that's trying to, all that's in the process of coming up, it's hard. It's really hard, and like, and you have a lot on your shoulders. But like, the beauty of it is to say that I have so much on my shoulders and I'm still getting by. To say that I'm about to go into another level and then everything around me blossoms as well because me providing and me getting us comfortable means that not only are we comfortable, but like I have the access and the information to bring that same ability to you in whatever you do. So now, who's really providing for who? Because that that's that's what I see in like the next five to ten years. It's like I wouldn't mind being the breadwinner, but like I said before, you the real millionaire, you know. So it's like I don't mind both of us like doing. I don't mind it because at the end of the day, it's like to me if we have kids, it's like well, daddy does blah blah blah. Mom, it's like no, both my parents make very good money. You know, like they they run the business, they do blah 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 blah, and they showed us that. It don't matter who the person is. Take care of your own and take care of your friend. Because at the end of the day, we're because say if I, I stop, say if we we get to where we need to be and something happens to me, mm-hmm. you still have the resources and the education and the whatever to push things through. Or to quote unquote take care of me, you know. And it's like I don't I don't provide. That's another thing too. For all the guys that's watching, don't provide out of ego. Do not provide out of provide because you love the person or like you're trying to really. Brian was not providing out of ego. I will tell you that much. You well, you well, never started providing out of ego. <laughs> I couldn't. How could I? <laughs> Shoot. I wasn't making that much money when we started dating. Brian's mindset was very different when we first started dating. I'll say that. I was. Ooh. No, you was. I, f- I forgot about that. I'm even going to lie to I you. I remember that one walk we went on when you was living at the apartments. And we were just walking around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And we just started talking about how we wanted to live and what were certain expectations of each other. And... I, I don't remember what was the question I had asked you. It was probably along the lines of being a provider. Mm-hmm. And you was like, no. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what made you stay? I mean, obviously that wasn't your reason for being with me. Yeah. Or with anybody. But it's like, what? How did that? how did that make you feel in the moment? I mean, it made me, it did make me feel some type of way. I'm not going to lie. I was like, this. You could say nigga. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I could. But um, it was a little, I don't know the word for it, but it was a little something. But I knew 
all the potential that he had. So I was like, Ooh, that's a, that brings me to this question. I know you're asking the question, but mm-hmm. I gotta ask this question. So when you said bringing me to art, you said bringing to the that said potential. Mm-hmm. That was like what three four years ago. Mm-hmm. So how have I lived up to that up up until thus far? That potential that you saw me at, or that you see me at, and then how have I lived up to that so far? Apparently, I knew what I was looking at. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment I'll take. <laughs> what's going on? Uh, oh, I gotta say her name right. Black Faith. What's going on, Black Faith? And what's going on, M? <laughs> yes, I will say that I was very good at spotting potential. That is hilarious. <laughs> You got to know when to when to really see potential, y'all. It's not always going to look the way it's going to look at, in the end. <laughs> All I say is this. She saw something because I was a skinny jeans, long sleeve, beanie hat when nah, I wasn't. Oh, God. He was very. <laughs> I was what? I don't even know what word to put that in. Different. <laughs> I ain't using the word different. I want something else. You were. I don't know. You were. You were. Even more stuck in your ways at a time, I would say. Because even more. Okay. Yes, because he had in his mind that he was going to do certain things and if he couldn't do them, then I don't even know. It was just like I can't even remember half of that. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It was a certain amount, like there was a point in time where you didn't even want to leave Louisiana. There was a point in time. What did you do to me? <laughs> how did you give? How did you open me up like that? Was it like an intentional thing, or was it like we just started experiencing life together? And I think it would have been. I mean, I don't even think it would have been really hard to. Because the type of person that I am in a relationship, I'm not just going to try to push something on you. No, you're not. I'm going to try to get you to see it the way I, I see it and try to help you experiencing certain things in a way that you will enjoy it mm-hmm. so that you can actually see what my viewpoint is. And hopefully you do enjoy it. And he just... I did. <laughs> to enjoy it. <laughs> that and I want to say right whenever we hit about a year, the traveling really started. Mm-hmm. Because like we was... The gig started picking up. I was going back and forth to... Bro, te- Texas had a chokehold on us for about a good four months mm-hmm. between all, like between Austin, Houston, and Katy. I think that's where we was mm-hmm. at. Between those three cities and then coming, it was Lake Charles, the other c- cities we was hitting, yeah. and Lafayette. Like It was just a straight line for like four months, just hitting the same places, back to back to back to back. Yep. Reason why we love Houston now, because, he, well, more so Austin and Houston, but we've been to Houston. Well, we've been no to Houston been, more. You think? Yeah. It was just that... We was in Austin for a longer time. Yeah, for a longer yeah it was in Austin for like a week. Yeah. That's true, that's true, that's true. And it was very enjoyable for us. Yeah, we're going back soon. We would have been there this week, but stuff got to get done. But yeah. we, yeah, we're going to be, yes. yeah. Yes, but yes, 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 yes. Let me see. What other questions do I have for you? Hmm. <laughs> oh, God. What you about to ask me? The fact that I even wrote that question down is surprising for me. That's because you know I'm going to answer anything. That's why. Yeah, th- this is true. Mm-hmm. This is true. Sex, you preferred morning, afternoon, or night? So what was the first word? <laughs> you talking about sex? <laughs> so, is sex... These are questions for you, though. Okay, so what? what is it? Morning, afternoon, or night? Mm, I don't... It'd be dependent. Because, like, I ain't gonna say it's, it's, there is no difference, but, like, we've had some of the best experiences at all points of the day. So, it's like, I don't... I'm thinking about so this. You one. don't have a preferred time. I really don't because it's like it just depends. Like some, like if I say, the reason why I'm not going to say mornings is because like, you know my morning routine. It's like I'm okay. I'm, well, I'm, morning weekends. Oh, weekends. <laughs> Even then, because I want to sleep. Oh, <laughs> I want to sleep. It's like I'll be like on Saturdays. I sleep. I'd be surprised mm-hmm. myself how deep I'll be sleeping. Mm-hmm. So probably like either afternoon or night because even the nighttime is like. You didn't got me so hooked into cuddling and like watching movies before we go yeah. to sleep. To where it's like I don't mind, but it's like if we're gonna do something, we going we probably gonna end with a movie or something like that. Mm-hmm. If you don't fall asleep, I Jesus Christ, do you don't do it movies. as much. No, I'm talking about after we do what we do, cause you will I, go straight. You don't do it as much. 
but normal you will go people straight to go sleep. to sleep afterwards. I, you know that don't happen to me. I know it. Like I said, normal. See, that's another reason why I would see. I'm not gonna say night either. Go to sleep because after afterwards. we do stuff at the nighttime, I'm cranked until like three o'clock, y'all. After I do Something whatever, wrong with him. I get like a whole bunch of energy after sex. So it's like, it's like, say we do something at like ten. Well, I well yeah, in between 20, 10 and twelve o'clock, I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep till about like two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm it just wakes up. me up. So I'm a, I'm gonna be I'm gonna say afternoon. Be up by himself. I'm an afternoon <laughs> type of dude. I'm gonna say that. Okay, afternoon type of dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? A, what? No, yeah. What about you? You know, I'm weird because like I like to take a nap before and after. So <laughs> <laughs> like to be prepared. It like, is. It is like a in lot. the middle of the night mm-hmm. is like like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> In in your see in your defense we be we be borderline breaking stuff so I I you gotta rest up I, under, <laughs> I understand pull lamp <laughs> three o'clock in the morning is just around the right time mm-hmm. you sleep a little bit before and then you sleep afterwards I don't know how you split your sleep up like that I can't once I'm out I'm out I don't know how you do that bro it's a it's a great balance I mean I would say try it but you have I I can't cause once I'm out I'm out <laughs> naps don't work. Not for me. They don't work. You've obviously tried it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I came with these questions right before, so that's it. Oh, that's all the questions? Yeah, all well, the give questions. me some on the spot then. Some on the spot questions. And if y'all got any questions, put them. We looking at the comment section right here. So if y'all got any questions y'all want us to ask, she going to read it. Well, we going to look at them and I'm going to see if that's something that we can answer. But yeah, just ask away. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I know you like when I cook, but I was going to have a song related to cooking. Like, do I like all the times you cook? Or, like, if there's, like, a least favorite dish or something like that? What is something you like that you don't like that I cook? Mm, I, I can't pick because the stuff that I don't like, I don't eat. It's because, like, well, I already know, like, anything that deals with any form of pasta you make, I'm going to tear it up. Any form of... You know what? Actually, as much as I like this meal, I think it's because I'm sick of this meal. I'm ready to switch it up. That's probably what it is. The, same, the meal bro- that we've been eating yeah. for the past two weeks. <laughs> so it's like, but even then, it's because we've been eating it so much. So it's like, you I know, don't... it is surprising from him because when oh, we Lord. first started dating, this boy used to eat like five eggs, four pancakes every day. He ate it. He could have ate it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I like breakfast though. You look. I haven't learned how to make French and toast. And then, yet. and then, uh, then he would put the eggs in between the pancakes. And yeah, just and put syrup, syrup on all top. Over it. Okay, hold on. Like, I'm not hold on. Wait, she about to. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I like what I like. Second of all, it tastes good. You got. You should try it. Third it of all, don't, I don't really do I that no it. more. I mean, I still do, it, but I don't do it. He don't like. No, we don't even eat eggs anymore. So I be trying. I be. You know, I do. I do what's best for. Uh, M said, how did you know they were the one? You answer first and I'm going to answer. You the one that's supposed to be answering these questions. Okay, how did I know she was the one? Uh, it was a, it was a plethora. It's the, it's the fact that she, how can I put it? It's the fact that she's the, she's the first person to successfully and do it the proper way. She figured out who I was, well, who I am. She figured out who I am and she knows how to challenge whatever me because like even like the way you're adaptable so it's like year one brian is not it's obviously not year four brian Mm -hmm. like we don't even talk the same no it's always has been getting better but like Mm -hmm. we don't even talk the same so it's but i love the fact that you you're not one of those type of girls to where it's like this is my method and like it worked on all my other niggas so i'm gonna do this on you you know, and it's like... How you, do you even do that? A lot of people do. It's like they view... They only have one box and one perspective for relationships. Knowing... Well, knowingly, it shouldn't be like it because each partner is different. I would but like so, you are dating the same person. Right. And I, don't, and I don't feel like... Well, from, from my perspective, I don't feel like you're treating me like you have treated anybody else in any other relationship. And I don't feel like this is any other relationship I've been in. Like, I, I'm actually... I mean, you know how it was before. It's just like... Yeah. Like if I'm done with something, I cut you off. I have no problem breaking up with people. I have no problem leaving people. So it's like it's the fact that we went through ups and downs, and then I wanted to work it out. We went through stuff that I would normally say is a deal breaker, and we worked it out. The fact that we grew past it and like we're mature about it. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that 
that like just because somebody messed up in times past it shouldn't linger on you know what i'm saying Cause, like we choose to be with it so it's like it shouldn't linger into the rest of the relationship Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't throw stuff that I did at you over my head and, and whatever, and I don't do the same to you because we've moved on from that. You know, so it's like, it's, the list goes on and on and on. She she the one. Like, between, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little things type of person. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I like the fact that you know, like you, what that was? That was yesterday. We were talking about stuff and you already knew what I was about. When we were talking with Chris and them, and you already knew what I was about to say, how oh, I was yeah, going to deliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, my favorite <laughs> colors. Like, you know, and it may seem new to y'all, but it's big to me. It's like, you know my favorite colors. You know how I like things. You know how... You just know my inner workings. And mm-hmm. no other, like... Nobody really took the time to do that. And, like, even the bad side. Nobody took the time to really get to know me like that. Or to, like, function with me like that. And that's what separates you from literally anybody else that I could possibly date. Even, God forbid, but after you. It's like, it wouldn't even knock the same. Because it's like... You literally caught me in that stage, even in, in psychology, when it comes down to people. From, like, coming into, like, adulthood... And then maturing. So literally the worst times you can be dating somebody because they're all over the place. Like you we just kept getting closer and closer. And that's for both sides. So that's just how I feel about that. Well, the way I knew he was the one is my my answer is probably really simple, but he was my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so crazy how natural things came between us our flow of talking the way we talked to each other and i had never experienced that before like i feel as though in my past it was always just like some i don't know like energy like having to feel as though I couldn't be myself in a sense and it's like that's interesting but it's like or feeling like I wasn't accepted fully as myself what made you feel like that though in past relationships and what did I do to make you feel the opposite well I think it does go in part with me because I think that was just something inner that I had to deal with as well Mm -hmm. because I didn't let a lot of people in so like mm-hmm. even if i don't know it was just something i had to deal with but i don't know it was just like there was no pressure between us because we both had very much the same ideology in going into yes. the situation like you know we was we liked it, each other's energy we did doing that word. What? Liked it. Liked it. I'm Liked. So, I'm sorry. He gets it. You see, that's another word. Like, sure. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not even going. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just on another level. Like, even down to our first date, it was just like, it was just like hanging with your friend. It was, and it was in those first moments of us where it was just like, okay, I could see myself being with this mm-hmm. person. I could really see myself being with this person. That wasn't your first time at another broken egg for our first date, huh? No, I had went with Heather before. Yeah, we was at, we went to our first date was at the bar, right? No, our first date was at another broken egg. At the bar, at the. At oh the yeah, at egg. the bar. Uh, <laughs> you had, it was Rancheros. No, what I, you had? I had the cinnamon roll French toast. You did, and you, you did. had that dry chicken. Biscuit. I know. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't see. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I do remember I was in like I think I was in like some joggers or some sweats. And, like, it was some, very casual. Yeah, and what, you was kind of dressed though. You no, was, I was not. I had on some little jersey shorts. But like, mm, yes, you did. But it was like. See, and now I'm thinking about next course. I'm thinking about the wrong stuff. I'm thinking about thinking about your physicality, yeah. your anatomy. But yes, and he's the only person that can even get me to even get on the idea of marriage because I did not believe in marriage. I am honored <laughs> when I tell you I'm honored because look, yeah, I take my time. Take your time, huh? Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let me see. She said yes. That's relatable. Thank y'all for the likes, by the way. All the likes coming in here. Subscribe to it. Oh, y'all ain't got to subscribe to me. Any other questions? Do y'all have any other questions? I'm trying to think of a question I want to ask you. Oh. What it? What was? What was? 
what was a boundary that you had that you had to set with me when we first started dating? Hmm. I don't know if it was a boundary or it just had to be like a known thing, like because he would think whenever I was just like needing my space, it was that I didn't want to be bothered with him or something like that. But it's like I am just the type of person where it's like I go deeply into like my mental sometimes and mm-hmm. I just have to figure out things to myself by myself in order to get to the next step of something. So it was more like me just reassuring you, I guess, into not thinking that I was getting like uninterested or some mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, because a lot of people have, and like a lot of people, I see, I feel like. I don't think about it as much now, but I, I used to think about, like, how different would I would have acted in the beginning of our relationship if my previous relationship wasn't so crappy. Because I had came from, like, a really messed up relationship into, like, ironically, the girl that I want. And it's like... You see, I don't know. I, I don't think your past relationships... Because, you know, I feel as though most people have, quote-unquote, bad past relationships. You know, I think it was perhaps your feelings towards those people. You really that didn't jaded. like that. Yeah, I mean, that's rare. Normally, like when people like if a girl hears a guy's like disposition towards the exes, like yeah, like he don't like it, we don't like a rah rah rah, and she was like, "What's wrong with you?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's not like I understood his feelings towards them, but I just. I do believe that you kind of, you don't forgive people, but I mean, but you do in a sense, like you kind of forgive them for what they did and you move on. Like you don't hold on to bad feelings towards these people or you forgive yourself for even dealing with it or some stuff like that. It's like, you don't, you just don't carry those feelings into the next relationship because it's going to have, an effect on it whether you realize it or not. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the, that's what I I just I didn't think that you should have hated them. <laughs> yeah, and then I remember one day you was like, maybe you still love them, and I want to cuss you out that day. There's a very thin line between love and hate, and that's the same thing you said after <laughs> that. And I was like, I I was like, because I didn't know how to take that at first. And I had to really, like, dig. I was like, well, do I? Because it, it was, like, the thought of me even, like, still. Because to me, it was, like, that mean, it came off, like, I'm still having feelings for them and wanting them and this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. And then when we kind of talked about it a little bit more, you was like, that's not what I meant at all. It's just, like, having love for the person and the fact, like, the the, the breakdown of the relationship and why it didn't work mm-hmm. in X, Y, and Z. So, I mean, hate is a very strong emotion. So if you hate someone, you realize how much energy it takes to hate someone. Like, mm-hmm. I might have a dislike for some for some people, but... But to really hate somebody. To really hate every them. Every time I see you, I, I'm in that mode. Yeah, like... That's so nah, med- like, it's premeditated. It's super meditated. You need to do something to get that energy out of you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you got to go to boxing classes or maybe box... <laughs> Not I mean, boxing classes. I mean, box them up. I don't know, but you need to get that energy out of mm-hmm. you, out your system. <laughs> you silly. Uh, what's going on, MK? MK said, hey, yo, what's going on, MK? Hey. I just realized you was up in here. Um, M. Devine said, what are your favorite types of dates? These spontaneous dates. Give me an example. It's, I guess, you know, I enjoy the random dates. It's like, you know, it wasn't like per se planned, but like, it was a, it's a free day where it's like, there's no work that need to be done. And like, let's just go out. Mm-hmm. Let's go walk around and look at things houses houses like that's what you like to do i do like when i look at houses so let's go look at houses let's go find a nice little place to eat and go back home and watch a movie like i do like them days <laughs> but that's not my favorite type of date though my <laughs> favorite type of date is like i'm using birthday for example even though it was the celebration of your birthday I oh it, lo- that was fun i love travel dates so, i love okay, when yeah. we travel don't, don't travel dates hit man they do. They like <laughs> It's just better. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I do, like... I think it's just... 
it being because the whole thing is different. Mm-hmm. It's a spontaneous. But even when we go thing. to the same, because like we we be wearing Houston out. We do, but every time we've been to Houston, we it has been a different. Experience. It's been different, and it's like granted, I don't, I'm not into the thrifting world like she is, mm-hmm. but it's like somehow I've learned to take enjoyment in that. Yes. You know, I think it might be the way, and I don't know. What, I think what's it that? was. I think it was Houston too, though. I think it was the idea of discovering the new places in Houston, because mm-hmm. it is different being like at home out here and just going to like the same, same thrift place. stores. Yes. So I think that's when you get like, okay, I, I don't need to go inside. What was that place <laughs> we went in Houston, and it was like we were sitting outside, but it was covered not velvet taco. And it was like a hot dog thing, and it was some of the worst. But I finished it, was, it because it I wasn't was wasting that money. It was some of the money. worst food, but it was still oh, like we still enjoyed man. it. Oh, now the I, lemonade was cold, but like the I, ice cream. Yeah. No, they had some good ice cream too. That ice cream was good. Um, With that other stuff, that I was food, like, mm-hmm. yeah, that food was. It was that wasn't for me. That was not good food. It how wasn't. You, how you it wasn't giving hot dog Houston. Is my question. It was not giving Houston. It wasn't. <laughs> Raven, what's up, Raven? <laughs> I just realized you're up in here. Hey. Forgive, forgive, but don't forget that part. Uh, I love spontaneity too. See you in the divine. Long drive, random dinner, nice stroll. It, see exactly. I like stuff like what? What are you doing? That's what I see. No, what? Yeah, she. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love looking at houses. Y'all want in the same, but her version of looking at houses is like she want to find a house and rebuild it in her mind on the spot. <sighs> or the the other house we've been looking I at. I find it fun. I mean, I'm not knocking it, but it's interesting because you've been looking, you've been mentally reconstructing that house for how long now? About a week and a half? It's been a good little minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. But you know, I am prepping and preparing myself because... We're moving soon. I know I want a house. I don't want to, I don't want a new build. I don't want a new build house. So I know in working with a house that's already there, I have to work with the blueprint that's already there. So... By looking and deconstructing different houses, it's just going to make it a lot easier mm-hmm. when we do get to the house that we're going to get right. and be able to transform it w- for what's already there and not having to... Because I, I just don't like new builds. I think they don't have character. Yeah. I mean, and especially if like and I think what it, we're trying to do. Yeah. You know, like my, my biggest thing is when we move, as long as we all have our own spaces. Yes. Not to say that we can't share a space together, but it's we like... We would prefer our separate work right. space. Because, like, I, now, especially now that I've been to co studio and it's not even attached to nothing, mm-hmm. and, like, I know that I can probably have, like, pro- like the other house we saw down the street, even though we're not trying to go there, but the house that's, like, by the... um. House. They got the little, the little shit. It has the huge yard. They got the whole bunch of walls at the top, where we was. <laughs> that Wait, house. Oh, the house that's in left? <laughs> no, 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 out here, down the street. Down the street. If we go into uh, the four-way stop right there, we go. We on Allen. Uh-huh. And we get to the bridge. Okay. And we make a right. Oh, that, that house. house. That house. Yeah. And it's like as long as I got me a little spot to do Dang, my all stuff. Them houses got walls. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but like either that one or the other office, the law office thing that you was looking. Yes, was looking at. that law office is nice. It's like I like as long as we got our own creative spaces because like it makes that like even because you know what I had to I had to unlearn to me is like this is my space but everything else is yours. But due to our last conversation, uh-huh. I realized that that is but isn't a thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, now I'm real adamant on like, even though we it was already in our ideas before, mm-hmm. now I'm really adamant on like, as long as we both have our own space spaces. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing I would want is to not, because I was thinking about, I was like, she don't like, like, you know, just to have that own creative space is like, yeah, that's needed. Yeah, you know? it is definitely needed. Because I know like, when it comes down to my space, it's like, I do a lot of things that takes a while to get pretty. So it's like, you know, it's a process. So having to be able to just close the door and not have to look at it all day is a very much better process. Mm -hmm. So So just always looking at work. Yes. You see to just work. Yes. I feel like. It's a lot. (laughs) A genius. Um, Beautifully Shar said, Having alone time is important in a relationship because you still have to know who you are as an individual. What's your definition of alone time? And what's your favorite way to have alone time? Alone time. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Because, like, I feel as though we automatically have 
a decent amount of alone time because with the way you work and the way I work on things, it's like they're drastically different. So, but in the sense of having alone time to just like purely have alone time, um, I would say it's probably just laying back and watching YouTube videos. Yeah, that's my alone time. Which you do a lot. Yeah. What is my version of alone time? I like, see, my problem is I like being too productive. So it's like... What is alone time with you? <laughs> right, because like, and no, cause like, you just got those and I'm already halfway through those. You are? Yes. Like while I'm listening to the little, the stuff that I'm working on right now, uh -huh. I'm reading. Or like, or if like I, I'm just reading them just to read them. So it's so like... So you're reading your alone time. I just, I'm busy. It's like, I don't, I don't know. I'm working on it. It's like, I, I don't know how to cut the switch off. The only the one thing for sure I know that like is alone time is when I'm watching Overlord because that's the only anime I've been watching lately due to my amount of time I've been having. But that's like that's probably like the only time I have like quote unquote alone time. And I guess my alone time is just like <laughs> reconstructing houses in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's that's my only that's my only sense of like I guess I, I hate to say this word but like solitude in a sense that's like that's just that's what I like that's what I that's what I've been on lately. It'd be me and Cosmo because I'm to be by the door looking outside the window. Yes, those dogs. If you had to pick, we're going to do this on, no. on, yep. If you had to pick a dog, which one is your favorite dog and why? And why is it Lonnie? My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Lonnie have a bond. Because Cosmo always up in here, but Lonnie never, like she's in here, but if that door is open, she's not in here. Me and Lonnie have a very good bond. I feel as though we be chilling. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, cause she chill with you, but she don't chill with me. She always like she comes to me when she wants stuff. Like we we may play around a little bit, but you know we be chilling for the most part, and we just got a vibe. Me and Default, Lonnie. I have to pick Cosmo, cause, <laughs> Lonnie, cause I ain't gonna lie, I love I love my dog, yeah. But Lonnie be coming to me when she want to go outside, when she hungry, or she'll bring a toy to me. She don't lay on me like that. Like, well, she she would, but, like, Cosmo's always right here. Mm -hmm. So, like, because, like, half of this, like, y'all haven't seen my dogs in frame yet. One dog takes up, if they was to stretch half out, takes them. out, not nah, more. Cosmo yeah, got more bigger. Than, yeah, more than half of them. So, like, she's taking the majority time. of the futon. So, it's like, it's just me and Cosmo all the time. And Cosmo just sleeping. Or, like, she just want to cuddle. Mm -hmm. But Lonnie, I'm getting a ball. She nudging me because she got to go use the bathroom or she want to go outside and play. Or she hungry. Like I said, me and Lonnie got to buy my pretty girl. Mm -hmm. I think that's why. <laughs> and Lonnie is, is like the, she switched, boy. She was the quiet to herself when now she's just the, the in your face. Just she at, is. Like, she's the athlete. Mm -hmm. And Cosmo is like the pretty girl. But I don't know. I have both girls. But we have both girls, by the way. Yeah. But I figured it was going to be Lonnie. I used to think it was Cosmo until I started seeing the habits lately. I was like, Lonnie spends way more time by you. Like I said, I don't know. There's something about Lonnie. <laughs> mm -hmm. See this? One. Should I text my ex? Yup, be toxic. <laughs> text your for what's what's your reason? That's what I want to know. What's your reason for texting? The, I just saying yeah, just to be stupid. Uh, what's your uh, reason for texting your ex, Tim? The person name is Tim. T dollars. My bad. T dollars. Should you text your ex? If you in a relationship, no, you yeah, should you, not yeah, text yeah, your do ex. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> if you are not in a relationship, then maybe. It depends on how y'all broke up. He said he been thinking about her. I, I, and, I can see him up there. Oh, yeah, and he's single. So, why? okay, tell me, hold up. Let me see, how many how many followers he got? What, you trying to go live? No, nah, I ain't going to do that. Okay. She hit me with no contact. It's been eight months. Ooh, child, hold up. Jesus. Just out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. So, she hit you up after eight months of no contact? Or, like, it's been eight months since y'all actually talked? Like which which one is it? Because if she just hit you up randomly out of eight months, I would. Well, how would you feel about that? If an ex hit you up like randomly after three months, how would you even feel about that? I would. I... Oh. What did he say? He said he cheated. Oh, you she cheated, could... dude! You tripping? Well. And she ghosted me. I would have ghosted you too. <laughs> we ain't got nothing to talk about. <laughs> I mean, in that situation, if you still open for it, I mean. Perhaps, I mean, some people need time to forgive. Yeah, and look, I will say this too, is like, I'm I'm just getting to the point of a, a new maturity point because it's like, and just in general about relationships and do's and don'ts because I forgot what we was watching. It was either I've been preached. I forgot, it was some YouTube, it was somebody who was watching 
No, it was um the after Zardy with the with the dude and the girls. The after Zardy. He was talking about um. Oh, the, they the, had a, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that they all go check. That's a dope podcast, by the way. Um, I forgot his name. I just I'm just recently started following, I'm so I don't call remember. Him Zardy. We gonna go with that. <laughs> and he was talking about how like even though domestic domestic abuse is a, is something we should not tolerate, you should not tolerate that if you're in a relationship. But he was saying how like how some people would be like, well, why are you still with such and such? And they'd be beating up on you. And then so they were like, well, love will make you stay and do this, that, and the third. And then the other girl was like, you know, until you get in that situation, maybe you the same. And I'm sitting here like, no, nah, I, I could see what you're saying, but like we have to cross the line at like what's really a boundary or what's right. Well, what's healthy and what's not healthy in relationships. Granted, people shouldn't be putting their hands on each other to begin with. Yeah. But it's like, if that, if cheating is something I, that like... But like, yeah, I think I, think I see, so, see where you're going with Right. Yeah. If, if cheating is something that y'all talked about and like that was a boundary set up between y'all, then I mean, if you if you feel as though you're truly sorry for it and like you can make up for it, do that. But if you were just out here, you know, you just going crazy and doing what you want to do is like, I mean, I'm not surprised she ghosted you because, you know, I mean, you could text if you want to, but if she ghosted you, you're probably not going to get a response. But I mean, if she responded back after eight months. Well, we don't know that. He still never answered the question. So did she hit you up after eight months or do you just want to hit her up after eight months? Yeah, we, we need to answer because he's all he's saying is no cap. And man, I'm truly sorry. Like, nah, I, I mean, I get it. But it all depends on who hit who hit who up how, because if it's been eight months since you did it and there's been no contact, then I mean, he said, it's nah, been it's been eight months. We okay. still have no contact. Yeah, you might as well just toss that to the field. Buddy. I mean, I'm not going to say that. When a woman is really fed up. I mean, yes, when a woman is really fed up, obviously she goes to you. But I mean. Eight months. That's almost a year. It has She didn't year. reach out or nothing. Yes. But I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to just be corny. You know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Son, eight, so, eight months is a long time. It is a long time. Somebody, but son. I mean. If you still thinking about her, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> y'all, y'all just continue not to talk. <laughs> hey, bro, don't. Hey, bro, let me tell you something. Here's one thing I learned about women: don't don't believe that what's the worst that can happen line because it's always son. Y'all, some about women. Y'all find a way what? to like to like. What's the worst that can happen? The worst you can say is no, and then y'all say or do something that will literally supersede what no could have been. Like niggas' feelings get hurt on a whole nother level. Like niggas should just never say nothing. I mean, like I said, you'll never know, man. I mean, you could look, look, bro. You could shoot your shot if you want to. I mean, it depends. Like, how strong, like, I think this is the point where you got to be honest with yourself. How strong are your feelings towards her? Like, okay, wait, we just. If you act, go, like, go, what do go. you think? <laughs> like, why? Like, I don't even know if there's a reason. But what was your reason behind cheating? <laughs> is Forget that. Let's be honest, bro. A woman, he cheated, right? Uh huh. And a woman went eight months without talking to him. No contact, no nothing. Eight months in woman time. That's lo- that's a whole other relationship. It could. Be. She didn't have time to get under over him and under somebody else. Is she in a relationship? He's. Let me see. He said somebody had put leave that girl alone. She's in a new relationship by now. That's tough. <laughs> And he put, she's not. Man, we was like this. She reached out once to get some. She left with me. That's tough. So when she reached out to yeah, get... Yeah, what was the conversation like when she reached out to get some? Like, what was even the exchange? Like, was, like did y'all y'all flirted? Did y'all have sex? Like, did oh, was she, it just, oh, was, like, very cold? Yeah, like, was, did she just come was, get was in the love? cold? <laughs> Man, that's did tough. Did you even try to say, like, anything to her in regards to, like... Anything like the cheating? <laughs> <laughs> so eight months is a long time, dude. That is a long time. Like you give a woman eight months, she coming back with a new credit score. She coming back with an Altima with some rims on it. She coming back with a whole new job. Yeah, that was six so, months. You ago. gotta think about it. When mm-hmm. it's something about when women, especially when women get hurt in relationships, eight months they transforming. Yeah, they are trans. Like I'm talking about like. New body, new job, new accomplishments. They didn't doggone became a billionaire in eight, nine months. It's something about when you hurt a woman. Like, it's different. It's just different. That was she said, but that was six months ago. Uh, also, no, but like, but what happened though? Like, once she, okay, once she reached out and once 
she left. She came to get something. And she left her. What happened? Like, was it strictly that she came? Did get she it, grab she it and go? Like, yeah, like did she grab it and go? Did y'all have a conversation? Like, what was like what was happening? So y'all have like. He said he just said it. Wait, what happened? Okay. She reached out once to get some. Oh, she left with him. Oh no, no way, no, no, no. I'm reading this wrong. Wait, what? But that was six months ago, and Ultima just said it. Women boss about to get cheated on. I don't see no answer. He said he just said it. They must be blocking his answer or something because I, I don't see it. Perhaps. Perhaps. She reached out once to get something she left with me, but that was six months ago. So I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 they must be blocking it. But Shar said women boss up after getting cheated on. They do. They do. Yeah, they like, do. Like, it's, it's, it's just so different. I don't I don't know what, what kind of energy y'all, powers y'all got, but when a woman get hurt, and then she break up with somebody, or they break up, or whatever. It's never the same. Like that's nothing you got to be mindful of too. Even if even you said the last time you talked was six months ago, like well with the whole her trying to get whatever, mm-hmm. that's still gonna be a different person. It's just something about like I don't know. Women just change so quick. He said, "I love that girl. That's all I think about." So my question is, was what took you so long? Uh. Well, first question, was it worth it? Was the Apparently cheating worth it? Apparently, it wasn't worth it. And two. Like what? Why? Why have you waited so long to reach out? That and, is, a, you know, yeah, like really, like you had, you had time. It was you valuable. Had a, you had time. You had enough time to like Rec- try to reconcile. Try to say something about it. He said, "Nah, I love the girl. We gonna show you what you messed up, you know, bro. She ghosted me like completely. Hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie. That was if 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 I was you, I just look." You win some, you lose some, bro. Yeah, you know, if some is meant to be, it'll it, yeah, it'll, it'll be. come, it'll come back. But eight months, six to eight months, and like no, man, that's most women come back, or at least some happen within three months, at least three months at but, the longest. But you know, I will also say, like, if y'all was as cool as as you say you was, as yeah, you say y'all was. I don't know, cause there's a there's a level of trust in that whole situation. Mm-hmm. Cause even being friends is like, mm, even I know you don't want to be her friend, but like, right? Sometimes that's where you gotta start, mm-hmm. right? Cause what what and that's the thing too is like, now you in a whole nother spot. Cause let's say she's been introduced. Cause like like regardless of how long, that's another question. How long y'all was dating for? But in that time period, you never know who somebody could reintro who get introduced to. Cause like. Eight months is a lot of time to meet a nice dude mm-hmm. that got money, that's in shape, or that's whatever she really wants. I'd say you're not, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that got what she would, she, the average girl would want or whatever, and has been treating her a certain type of way for six, you know what I'm saying? For a little minute. Or she could have just been being to herself. Or she could have just been, you know, you never know. It could have been a lot but of things. But that's a lot of time. But he won't know unless he find out. If is, she responds. If too. she responds. I mean, and that's the thing, like, you could text her if, she, like, the worst she could do is not respond. Like, yeah. that's what that's just how I feel. I mean, like, if homegirl moved on, she moved on. That's something yeah, you need to go in expecting. Yeah, that's, hey, man, look, more power to you. Because that's not, it's hard to shake back from something like that. It really is. My girl. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm saying what's up like she know what I'm talking about. What's up, Marcia? Yeah, hey, Marcia. <laughs> like, she could read my mind. <laughs> Uh, we need more content with Amber. You late. Because we got... We, this is episode two of A&B Conversation. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is episode two. But well, she we has had, been on before that. We have So, um, go to go to the YouTube. We have... um, Y'all could follow people. My bad, we just talked about... We ain't mm-hmm. plugged the YouTube not one time. <laughs> go to YouTube, type in uh, Coach Brian or Coach Brian Get Your Fine. Go to YouTube and type that in. Like, go to videos. Like, mm-hmm. it should already be... I have a playlist for it already. I have the A&B... Conversation plays, I did that. Um, mm-hmm. and I have the Live Brian playlist. Or you can just go to videos. It's like she's one of the most recent videos. I think like two, three episodes ago. Yeah. Y'all go subscribe. Y'all go check it out. Like it's we've been doing the and we, oh I forgot to say too we hit over it ain't even been thirty days we hit over a hundred uh thousand views we have almost a thousand subscribers on there like it ain't even been a whole month yet so y'all please get the word out there because we are trying to monetize it we are trying to turn it into because whenever we whenever we're able to get monetized then they start paying us you know and we get to have better cameras better setup you know to where like we can probably actually start redecorating this because I, I especially after watching the last podcast that mm-hmm. i watched and then you know us watching all other podcasts that we watch i do want a better setting set up than this mm-hmm. because like if i were to change this this is still my studio so mm-hmm. it's like it is it's not gonna work how i think it's gonna work 
But when we do get monetized, y'all, we want the better cameras. We want the better quality. You know, like, we want to give y'all a better experience. So, please. Thank you for the crown, Marcia. Mm -hmm. um, so, please, y'all, please go subscribe. Share us. Like, make sure people tap. Like, just get us out there. Because the more that y'all do it, the more that we do it, the episodes can be better. The content, the audio quality could be better. Y'all having mm -hmm. a buzz right now. I got to get a whole nother quarter-inch cable. Y'all already know what that is. So, y'all, please, just hit that subscribe button. And then we're going to go from there. I think somebody asked. What? Question. Okay. Um. Well, oh, I gotta say your name right. L eleven Avion sings eleven. You a single? First of all, you a single. So, uh, please slide in my DMs. I like one of my uh thing because I also do too. I want to check out your stuff. I want to mm -hmm. make sure I stay in contact with you. But she says, does trauma directly affect physical health? Yes. I think it can. Yes. Yeah. No, for a fact, it does. Somebody subscribe. Oh, we got our first subscriber. Thank you so much. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing but... Okay, Marcia, you, you ain't about to be up here making us cry. That's what I'm talking about. But go on to YouTube and subscribe, too. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's big, man. Now I got to make now I gotta make a super private chat so we can have regular and private chats at the same time. <laughs> I'm about to get extra with this. Thank you. But the question was, does trauma directly affect... Uh, Physical, uh, oh my God, look at it. What am I looking It's the subscription thing. Ooh. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. But does trauma, uh, directly affect physical health from a, okay, now I'm about to hop into Coach Brian mode. So what we have to understand is that whatever, let's start with part one. Every, every part of your nervous system ties back into your eyes. There's a reason why you can look at certain type of colors and feel some type of way. You can see yourself getting bit by a dog and associated with pain. You can, like, it, like everything is tied to your eyes. So whether it be trauma that you see from watching certain things or trauma that you've been through yourself, it's going to always affect, you, affect your physical health, whether it be for the good or for the bad, because it's an imprint. It's a big imprint. Prime, prime example, people that don't really have anything wrong with them or that don't really have erectile dysfunction but they may have performed horribly once or twice in the bedroom. That doesn't make them have erectile dysfunction, but they walk with the traumatic mindset of somebody who has it. So now they're doing X, Y, and Z to get back to what they feel as though is their sexual prime when honestly they never left out of it. I'm, me, for example. It's like I performed a few times horribly. You know, and it's like I had to get out of that mindset. It's like, well, no, you just had a little off moment, but like let's get back to where you need to be. You know, and it's like... I never had ED, but it's like I've went through the symptoms of that because traumatically or in my head is like, cause I, and that's another thing, so I've never been challenged in that way, you know, to have a partner that like you got to actually work to get it, to get the job done, you know, in a, in more than one way. So it's like, you know, we just, we, we go through certain, and that's just one example. There's many other examples that you can use. There's people that get in car accidents and nothing physically happens to them. But, like, they're traumatically scarred mentally, so, like, they develop flinches. They develop, mm -hmm. like, different types of nauseousness. They develop different types of, like, mental drowsiness and fatigue, even though nothing's wrong with them, but their mind is telling them something's wrong with you. So, yeah, trauma always ties in some way, shape, or form to, uh, to a person. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I'm so excited for y'all. We'll do, oh, my guys, oh, my, OMG, you guys are so genuine. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank like, you. all of this stuff is not scripted. Like, the questions are written down, but, like, we just be up in here talking. Well, some of them was. <laughs> what? Some of them questions was not. Oh, yeah, other than the other ones, too. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm still looking at this. I, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, transparent moment. One of my friends, I don't know if y'all follow her. Her name is Lemon. She's in, uh, not Croatia. She's, she's out of the country. I forgot where. And she's somebody that I met when I was doing the verses when that was a big thing on the live. And we became good friends. But her time zone is like when morning is night and vice versa. So like she sent the subscription thing to me so I can have access to it. And I was like, OK, I'll make it just to have it just in case. But I never really promoted it or like really tried to because you already know what my brain be at with this stuff. But to see, you know, like to see somebody subscribe that I can't. And then there's somebody that's close to us and that we love. Like, thank you, Marcy, for real. That that's. That was genuine of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcia. How can how can you work through trauma? I got an answer, but do you have, do you have answers before I say something? I cannot compete with a scientific answer. What? Well, no, just in general. <laughs> just in general. Because I mean, people need both perspectives. How can you work, work through, trauma. through trauma? I would say it's an everyday process. You know, it's you constantly being able to, I guess, give yourself mantras like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get through this. I know it's hard today, but 
perhaps tomorrow will be different, you know. And it's the the little wins. You have to give yourself mm, a lot of little part. wins to get to a big win. That part. But the little ones are big. But yes. nah, I, feel, I feel that, though. And that's essentially what I was going to say. Because, like, I know for me, getting over past traumas from past relationships is, like, I had to slowly but surely consciously... Because, like, it, the thing that really helps you out is, like, it's a subconscious thing. Mm-hmm. So you have to consciously grab the subconscious moment. So it's, like... Prime example, we oftentimes uh, have conversations with our, as people, we have conversations with that voice inside of our head. Mm-hmm. And you don't really realize that you have the capability to control that voice in a sense or to like stop the voice or like just interact with the voice. Yeah. So it's like in those subconscious moments, are those really in your, in your mind moments? Try your hardest to realize what moment you're in, how do you feel, and how do you combat that? And how do you work towards a better reconditioning? Because prime example... You can be trauma- traumatized behind whatever the situation may be, but thir- let's, what if you take 30 days or 40, 40 I'm going to say 40 days to like put yourself in a new environment constantly in a healthy environment around people that's healthy for you and submerge yourself with love, affection, and affirmation while actually doing the shadow work and, the sp- and even get a therapist if need be. You know, and like, what, if, what does that look like? You know, what does effort look like mm-hmm. for yourself? Because that's really what it is. A lot of people are suffering with them not putting enough effort towards themselves. But I feel like that's something you can, you know. And how long does it take to form a habit? I think it was like 48 days. Mm-hmm. It's like the true, it's the true thing. And, mm-hmm. and I, I would say that it depends on the type of person. Because for me, all I need is about two weeks to a month. But the scientific. About, oh, that's how we do About 40, <laughs> about, I don't know what that was. About like 48 days. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking my And advice. how long does it take to break a habit? Uh, it take a little long, I think it's like it? 90 days. Yeah. It's somewhere around there, I want to say. But like prime example, you should be making sure that you're doing what you have to do towards yourself every single day to like and it, and it may seem like work because it is work, but we have to life isn't fair. You know, so it's like you may be in a messed up situation or you may be some maybe a result of a messed up situation, mm-hmm. but that doesn't define you. We all that's the thing about us as people. We always have... That, well, that's what separates us from most other species. Yeah. We consciously can make efforts to either stay where we're at or grow, no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable. So that's just... That is what it is. Yes, we are multifaceted creatures. That part. That's a better way to say it. Um, Boy, them comments was rolling in. Hold up. Wait a minute. M said, journaling. taking Talking to yourself as if you're writing a letter to yourself or the person that hurt you. And that's big on physical and mm-hmm. spiritual side because when you start taking stuff out of your mind and writing it down, i.e. vision boards and stuff like that, nine times out of ten is going to happen. Especially if you really believe in it and you're working towards it, it's going to happen. Uh, Marcia said, having a support system definitely helps, and yes, it does. Yeah. Because you need that type of stuff. Shar said, journaling how you're feeling to get it out can help, for sure, for sure. Um, M. Divine said, moving your body, breath work, somatic stretches for trauma, that part too, because trauma does get locked up inside of the muscles in the body. Prime example, when we started working with Vana, mm-hmm. and Vana started coming through, like, you can go on that table tense with this, that, and the third on your mind. You're getting up with nothing. Like, you will be f- literally floating for the entire day yes. and some. So, yeah, it, it can all, it definitely all can be. I love, and shout out to y'all for the, the replies and the comments. Like, y'all, yeah, this is the type of community we want in the comment section. You know who I thought about? That, um, that Asian man that do the breathing at the, at the Oh, episode. my mm-hmm. God. Monk Tok Choi. He, uh, he, is that his name? I don't know. I want to say that's him. I found this. I found this. Um, this Asian, no, this Chinese practitioner, about three years ago. When he was, he was living with Chihuahua for three about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Two, three years. Well, yeah, three years ago I was living with. And I found him, and I literally consumed all of that man content in six months. Mm -hmm. And he be he. I'm talking about whatever, whatever type of. it's whatever. Like, he has breathing exercises for everything. Yes. Mindsets for everything. And, like, he's just... And he's old, but, like, he functions like he's our age. Mm-hmm. Like, he's old. Like, I, I think he's, like, in his 70s by now. But he, like, could still karate chop a fool. Like, he's still, like, <laughs> squatting and jumping and, uh, like, having, like, frequent... Like, like he... Do good. Do is real good. He, he works in holistic medicine. He does. Yes. Um... Yes, you have to work through it. Well, Coffee 864 said, yes, you have to work through it because if you tuck it away, it will it will rear itself. It doesn't go away. Exactly. The things that you don't work on, they don't go away. They just go somewhere else. Yeah. Not to say that they leave you. They think they went away. Right, but it's still within you. 
M. Devine said, The Body Keeps the Score is a good book on why movement is helpful. You can't really break habits, only replace them. That part. I'm loving this comment section. Avion said, Although healing is a continuous journey, so it doesn't... Wait, although healing is a continuous journey, mm -hmm. so it doesn't end. Do you think you can date while healing? For sure. Because while we was healing, we started dating because we had a lot of healing to do. And even... That's another thing, too. I think I think it depends on yourself though, like where you're at right. in your healing process. Because healing doesn't technically stop even when you get in a, a good healthy relationship. Because once you really get to let go and drop your guard down, you start realizing that there's things you have to heal from that you didn't even realize you had to heal. From. Yeah, like there's certain personal relationships I didn't realize I had bad habits towards, or like I had to put up certain boundaries to, or I had to get over. You mm -hmm. know, so but it took me getting into a safe space. In a relationship, to not even be thinking or worrying about X, Y, and Z to be like, okay, that's off my mind. And then, whoop, the real problem or the underlying problem pops up and it's like, oh, I got to deal with that. So, healing is going to forever be a thing because we're always going through life. Always, always. How long have we been on here? Uh, we got we didn't get on at 3.15 because Kai called. So, about like 3.20, 3.30, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, for like over, a little bit over. Uh, okay, cool. We're going to do like one or two more questions, y'all, and then we're going to get up out of here. Man, I'm still, it still looks so good to see this doggone subscribe person in here. Like, the little difference between, like, the little badges and stuff. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Y'all have no idea how that, make me, how that made me feel. Something I wasn't even planning. Good signs. Real good signs. But um, while we're waiting on questions, and, and if y'all don't have no questions, buddy, we're just going to get off. Yeah. Um, Because I, I, I know what I'm craving. Yeah, I'm about to go crazy. I know what I'm craving. Uh, what I was about to say. Yeah, y'all, please, once again, y'all, please go to... Now we need more subscribers. Yes, we do. What's your biggest motivation in life? It's a tie. It's a tie between her and myself. Because it's like... I don't even know how to... I'm trying to put this into words properly. It's like, I always strive to be a better version of what I used to be. And I always strive to be a better helpmate, soulmate, boyfriend, future husband for her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, you are one of my leading, my biggest motivational forces. I also have, and that's just me as a person. I've always been this way. I want to be better. I don't like being in the same spot I was before. It's like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a competitive person. And thank God I'm not as competitive with people like I used to be. Mm -hmm. But now my biggest competition is myself. And it shows. My biggest motivation, I would say, is generational prosperity. Because... Mm -hmm. I know I can only do so much in this life. Mm -hmm. And I would hope to pass on as much as I possibly can so that the next generation will have way more than I had to work with. So that's kind of my motivation because I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn things, teach myself how to do things. And I know by giving the knowledge of certain information mm -hmm. and just certain aspects of life to somebody is as valuable as money. Mm -hmm. Money is valuable, mm -hmm. but it is just as important as giving generational wealth. Right. So, and before we get to the next question, just tagging off of what you said, I'm at a point, I don't think we ever talked about this yet. I'm at a point now to where like, I don't agree that money doesn't buy happiness no more. I don't, I look, do not agree. With I that. don't agree with it either. I think, if you had issues before you had money, you're going to have issues after you have right. money. And but it I, depends on your issues. Right. But I will also say this, too. It's like money, in a sense, does buy happiness because I am happier when my bills are paid. I am <laughs> happier when, no, like, for real. like When I'm I don't have to worry, worry. about exactly. how I'm going to get certain things or Not how I'm going to fix the car or, you know, just, I, I think it's just, a quote that people have tried to tell the poor, money no, like, don't no, make for, you happy. Exactly. <laughs> it, and that's, a, that's what I came to with it. Because it's like, it shouldn't be your main source of happiness, but it should attribute to some of your happiness because it's like, you could tell yourself as much as you want to, I'm happy this, that, and the third, but if you were to lose all your money today and you can't you can't pay for nothing new, then you end up homeless, it's going to take you a while to be happy homeless if that's the rest of your life, honestly. And even some homeless people, it's like, they happy, but some of them not, they're like, I'm happy, but I'm not happy in the sense it's like, yeah, I'm happy with this life and I'm alive and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But there was a point where I had X, Y, and Z. Because you think about like the billionaires and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. may not be the happiest people on the, on the planet because mm -hmm. their goals are totally different. Yeah. But it's like you can 
be happier or enjoy more of your life when you can enjoy more of your life. If we weren't yeah. in a capitalistic or capitalism type of society, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But in real life, you need money to travel. You need money to eat. You need money to do this, that, and the third, or to even start your own resources or whatever for your own. It, everything requires money. So money does indeed buy a sense of happiness, but it should not be your source of happiness. I, I want to say that. But um, let's see. Let's go into something. What's the other question? At? All, right, all them comments that came in. What is three key points you'll give a young person to strive in life? Oh, you answered that before I answered that. Three key points to strive in life. I got to answer if you don't have one yet, though. You can go ahead and answer. Number one, focus on you unapologetically. Always focus on you. And, and I don't care if nobody call you selfish. I don't care if nobody call you this, that, and the third. Focus on you and who and identifying who you are for yourself so nobody else can tell you who you are. Number two, do what's going to better you and not what other people want you to do. You have gifts, you have talents, you have whatever you're interested in. Focus on that because those things and that time that you'll take from a very young age focusing on that, by the time you get to the working class or the working part of your life, you, you've already been so consumed and wrapped up in it to where it's like you're, just, you're still living your life just monetarily. Uh, number three is life isn't fair, bro. Don't expect no handout from nobody. Life is not fair. We can't all be blessed with a small loan of a million dollars from our parents. We all can't be blessed with 40 acres in the mule for this, that, and the third. Life is not fair. You got some people that grew up in the slums. You got some people that's born into wealth. You got some people that's born into poverty. So take what you got, make the best of it, and always add to it. But don't, don't worry about nothing else other than yourself. Everything else is extra. Because you're too young to be trying to put the weight of other people on yourself when you don't even know who you are. Find out who you are and then worry about adding people into your life. That was a good three points. I ain't, no, nope, no. Nope. Because <laughs> I immediately went to like my, co like when I went to college and why and how I got to college. I immediately went to like the stuff I was doing when I was young and stopped doing, like I, I immediately relived all of that to where it's like, because now I'm at a point to where it's like, this is my, like I'm 27 and now I'm taking my first big leap. Mm -hmm. As opposed to I should have did this at 16. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Find out who you are ahead of time. And then especially with the world that we're living in right now, they all, like, everybody wants you to fit. We were talking about this the other day. One of my other friends had hit me up about, um, she's bisexual. I ain't gonna say her name and all her business, mm. but she's bisexual. But she feels as though, like, she wishes there was a way to where she can be, or society would accept people that's bisexual or whatever sexuality, but don't have to fit into the LGBTQ plus community and stuff like that. She just wants to be her. And my thing is, like, like I was telling her, I was like, it shouldn't matter. You should just be you and who be whatever you want to be. That You shouldn't even be worried about that. Yeah. But sadly, the world that we live in today, as much as people want to have their, be not labeled in this, that, and the third, they're placing labels and people in boxes and communities that, that, let's be honest, that isn't really healthy. Because you, like, if I'm, if I'm somebody who's going through life, I don't have it figured out, you got to think about it. The average person, like we said last night, the average person doesn't even live to 100 years old no more in America, barely. Mm -hmm. So that's not a long time. And that's not enough time for you to like be making or thinking a certain type of way as if you're going to live forever. Live for yourself, bro. If you like what you like, you like what you like. If you want to do this, you want to do this. But don't expect people to, to live in your box that you put yourself in because we're all, and I've, I've been saying this since the beginning of time, like, individuality in America is dwindling. Like, be your own person. You don't have to be a part of community to be who you are or what you want to be. It's as simple as that. Yes. My, I just had to get, I just had to say that. Because, like, that just made me think about every other thing that I talked about the other day. Ooh, child. What? Comments is rolling in. <laughs> I'll leave you stress. You guys are fun. Yep. But y'all, it's almost 5 o'clock, and our dogs are barking. We've been on here for a little while. So all of y'all that missed out, for I'm not, I wouldn't. Now, look, for all y'all that, that missed out, I'm telling y'all right now, go to the YouTube and subscribe because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing Monday through Thursday at 3.15 Central Standard Time on TikTok. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all, the moment we get the clearance to monetize and be live on YouTube, I'm going to We're YouTube. Going live on YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to YouTube. So, like, y'all, please, for now, for, like, maybe the next two weeks, maybe, depending on how things move, 3.15 Central Standard Time is when I'm going to be on here. We will have a, uh, a and B conversations once every week. 
And I do have a special guest coming this week too, y'all. Comedian Chris Jones. He said he's coming. He wants to do. I think it was Thursday or Friday. I forgot what date exactly. Friday. But I think I want to say it is Friday. Yeah. Um. No, it might. No, no is it, it it's was, Wednesday it or was, Friday. It was Friday because he said he get off early on Friday. You're right. So um. So yeah, I got a special guest. Y'all go look him up, comedian uh, Chris Jones World. Mm -hmm. Chris Jones World. Y'all go check him out. But um, yeah, once we migrate, we migrate. And I don't want y'all to miss out. So maybe for like another week, another two weeks, I'll be going live Monday through Thursday on here, 3.15 mm -hmm. Central Standard Time. But once we get to migrating, we get to migrating, y'all. But I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. I hope that y'all just take something from it. And if y'all mm -hmm. y'all missing anything or if y'all came in late, this should be uploaded by Friday, Saturday, somewhere around this time. Mm -hmm. I should be done, depending on, because I got some other stuff I'm doing. But I hope y'all had a good one. God bless y'all. Y'all be good, praise God. Y'all have a good one. We Bye. out.